Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us in your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our collect for revitalization. Almighty God, your spirit moved over the depths and brought all creation into being. We pray that your Holy Spirit would likewise move over this parish of St. Ambrose. Guide us as we seek to embody true hospitality healing through community, and homecoming for all, not just within our parish, but out in the world around us. Reassure us when we doubt, and give us the courage to live in the fullness of your Spirit. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. first lesson from Genesis today is a bit of history of the customs in times long ago. Also was used to justify polygamy. <laughs> but it failed because we don't believe in that. A reading from Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, would you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. 
Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for your youngest daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. And he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpha to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, what is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, this is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the wheat of the one. We will give you the other also to return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed his her week. Then Jacob and then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord of God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Psalm for the day is Psalm 105 in your prayer books or in the handout or on the wall. We will read it by and responsively by half, half verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make, Make known his, his deeds, deeds among, among the peoples. peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. And speak, speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let, Let the, the hearts, hearts of those who seek, seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually, Continually seek, seek his, his face. face. Remember the marvels that he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant. The promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as the statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, to you will I give the land of Canaan to be your inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The epistle today is from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. 
And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. <coughs> and those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than con conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present or things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, 
but when it has grown into the greatest of shrubs and become a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of the household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. If there's one thing that Jesus talks about in the Gospels, it's the kingdom of heaven. He seems to want us to give our all for it, to ask God for it with all our hearts. We dutifully pray every Sunday the words that Jesus taught us, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. But do we know what we're praying for? Will we be able to recognize it when we see it? When I look at the news headlines, it sure doesn't look much like the kingdom of heaven around here. Where is it hiding? Where do I have to go to find it? If you'd asked Christian theologians throughout much of Christianity about the kingdom of heaven, they would have said that God's kingdom is to be found in the next world after we die. They'd point out that this world is a temporary stop on our journey toward God's heavenly kingdom. In a world filled with fear, war, famine, poverty, slavery, disease, corrupt rulers, and lives cut short, they found little room for heaven on earth. For much of Christian history, we taught that our goal in life should be to escape this world, to live in such a way that God might grant us access to God's heavenly kingdom where all would be put right. Such an interpretation would have been a surprise to Jesus, though, who was clearly speaking about an earthly reality, a divine rule of love opposed to the oppressive rule of of Caesar. These days, many Christians don't even like to use the word kingdom. Kings are out of vogue. They represent hierarchy and imperialism and male dominance. You'll read and hear liturgies that speak instead of God's reign, R-E-I-G-N, Unfortunately, that phrase sounds to my ears like a heavenly weather forecast. You know, cloudy with God's thunder and God's rain. Other liturgists leave out the G in kingdom, calling it the kingdom of heaven, as in a world in which we're all kin, all equals. Presiding Bishop Curry, among others, likes to call it God's dream for the world. 
Another preacher defines it as the name for creation when creation is rightly ordered by the goodness of God. I like the image of God's kingdom being a world made new. Yet, when we make the kingdom of heaven into a perfect world on earth, we can also start thinking that it's a human project. It's something that we have to create for God. To me, that makes God's kingdom sound more like a burden than a gift. Rather than drawing us a map to the kingdom of heaven, Jesus uses parables to help us find it. He asks us to use our imaginations to intuit a kingdom hiding in plain sight. Think of these five short parables in today's gospel as Instagram reels with the sound turned off, as short, homemade film clips of common things that present our imaginations with some images, one after the other. So I invite you to close your eyes now if you'd like, not for a nap, but to watch these reels unfold, to jumble around in your brain, and to lead us to that crazy divine kingdom that is already, but not yet, here. When you say kingdom of heaven, Jesus begins, picture a tiny grain of mustard seed, the minute speck that turns into unwieldy bushes that sprout up everywhere like weeds. Look, here's a farmer methodically planting his crops in nice, neat rows. But that's not my father's kingdom. Instead, picture a farmer deliberately throwing mustard seed in a wheat field where it doesn't belong. By planting invasive mustard, this farmer's risking chaos by mixing kinds of crops together, breaking the law of Moses. He's risking failure by planting a weed that will contaminate his wheat harvest. Okay, now imagine the majestic, tall cedar tree of Lebanon with sturdy boughs that provide a home for birds to come from far and wide. This tree is often a symbol of powerful, strong nations, welcoming other nations under its shade. But that's not my father's kingdom. Instead, picture the birds finding safety and shelter among the weak, drooping branches of a four-foot-tall mustard bush. Seek God's kingdom among the weak and insignificant, the unruly and the wild. By the way, if you don't know about planting mustard, maybe this reel will help. Perhaps you can imagine a computer virus, a tiny, itty-bitty equation that gets dropped into a computer system. It brings banks and governments to their knees. Here's another reel to watch, offers Jesus. Picture a royal herald announcing the triumphal entry of the emperor and his court with trumpets and fanfare. But that's not how my father's kingdom will come. No, picture instead a lowly housewife picking up a tiny piece of decaying bread called leaven. This bit of bread has been sitting in a damp, dark place until it's full of mold. The women quickly hides it in a massive amount of flour. As the mold spreads in that huge vat of flour, watch this dough rise into at least 110 pounds of warm, delicious bread. This much bread could feed 150 hungry people. Watch God's kingdom slowly multiply beyond our understanding, breaking down the boundaries of pure and impure, of holy and corrupt, feeding us all along the way. By the way, does this reel remind you of the story about the crucified criminal who becomes the Messiah? 
The story where death becomes the way to eternal life. The story where suffering leads to glory. That's the way to get to God's kingdom and be fed. Ready for another reel? Picture someone receiving a sudden reward. See the joy on his face? Can you see the shiver of delight that rushes through him all the way to his fingertips? Imagine someone picking a winning lottery ticket, receiving an unexpected kiss, learning that a tumor is benign. That person didn't do anything to earn the money or the love or the good news. And we don't see the end of the story to know that this person did the right thing with it once they have the reward in their all-too-human hands. Now imagine a construction worker digging in the heat in a field. His shovel unexpectedly hits the top of a chest full of gold coins. What can be better than that? But wait, the field doesn't belong to the worker. As an employee, can he keep the coins? Doesn't he have to return the treasure to the owner of the field? Picture the worker quickly covering the coins back up with dirt, hiding them with sod, and pawning everything that he owns to buy the field before he announces his miraculous find to anyone. If he buys the land, the treasure that brings such joy will belong to him, undisputed and forever. But wait... Don't his sneaky actions make him a shifty person, deserving of punishment rather than reward? But yet, he's rewarded anyway. Now imagine a rich art dealer who finds the most beautiful painting in the world, the perfect one that she's been searching for in auction after auction all of her life. She wants it so badly that she sells her gallery, her house, and her car in order to buy it. She has her painting, but what was she thinking? Now, except for the painting, she's totally broke. Remember that story about the medieval church selling the free gift of forgiveness of sins in order to fill its coffers with gold? Indulgences, they were called. Remember the old song from the 60s about the people with the one tin soldier who kill everyone in the mountain kingdom for their secret treasure, their treasure that turns out to be a stone inscribed with peace on earth? Love is a treasure, a treasure that we didn't earn, a treasure worth giving everything for, but it's not a treasure that can be bought and sold or possessed in some perfect way. It's an undeserved gift, a joy worth everything, and always a surprise. Ready for one last reel? Picture a big net full of bounty from the sea, ready to be sorted. Is this net the church? A big net? full of all kinds of people, people that we have to accept with a sigh until the final judgment when God will give the rotten ones what's coming to them. Is the church God's kingdom? No. As the kingdom, God's net must be bigger than the church and bigger than we could ever imagine. We, the church, are just one of those sea creatures in there one that has yet to prove by its actions whether it's fresh or rotten. Today's gospel parables show us that there is nothing clear-cut about the kingdom of heaven or our place in it. How far do we have to run from our messed-up lives to find God's kingdom? The good news is that we don't. It's a kingdom in which a criminal can find rest and forgiveness. Yet it's also a kingdom in which justice will be done. It's a kingdom with a king who bleeds 
just like his wounded subjects. It's a kingdom that waits silently within tragedy, waiting to transform it in ways that we don't always understand. It's a kingdom that we can't control or possess, pin down or regulate. It's a kingdom whose best teachers are children, the outcast, and the lost. It's a kingdom that spreads in spite of evil, uses corruption for its own purposes, and breaks down every boundary that we put in its way. Amen. I invite you to stand now in body or spirit for the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for, for those, those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For all immigrants worldwide seeking asylum and safety by risking life. We pray that countries, including the U.S., would work on cooperation, not isolation, with all world countries. Today we remember and give thanks for the work and witness of Jesse Little Doe Baird of the Mashpee Wampanoag Nation. As a child, she dreamt of talking to her ancestors in their native language, which was taken from them by European colonizers. She used her master's degree in linguistics to learn the lost language of her ancestors and teaches it to children in her Wampanoag community. Today, there is a growing group of children who can speak their native language. Like Jesse, let us not rest until there is equal dignity and justice for all. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. We pray for the women of Yemen, who are the sole food providers to one-third of the families in a country where 80% of the population require humanitarian aid. 
We pray for the many who are affected by heat, flooding, violent storms, and gun violence. We pray for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. We pray for a lack of education for all older girls in Afghanistan. We pray for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kim, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray especially for those who are ill, are in need of healing, Casey Carruthers, Mark Atwater, Kathleen Johnson, Don Richter, Carol, Bob's sister, who is waiting for open heart surgery, for Rosie Tirada, and all who are on our hearts. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We especially pray for the second week anniversary for John and Clara. <laughs> we will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Charlie and Joe Jacobson, and we pray for their families. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we also pray for safe travel for Walter mm -hmm. and for Christy and Dan. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you. you opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in e uh. I want to give a special welcome to our guests who are with us today. If you haven't yet filled out a little yellow card, there are some in the pew in front of you. If you'd like to get more information about St. Ambrose, uh, just put your information down on that card and you can put it in the offering plate as it comes by. But we're so glad that you're here and hope that you'll join us for cake and refreshments after the service. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
please rise in body or spirit for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Ambrose and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share. Please rise in body or spirit for the post-communion prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So be ready to love and unhesitating in kindness. And may the blessing of the deep mystery of God, source of life, love, and hope, word of life and ever-present spirit of grace be with you this day and all your days. Amen. Amen. Hymn 551.
was a short hymn. <laughs> Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Got to get a picture with the cake. Yeah. Just.